Hi guys. I'd like to do a study with you, but I simply don't know where to begin. I feel it's imperative that we, um, there's such an urgency to chat about how the biblical prophecies and about the end times are coming to life in our day and age. And I know for I don't know how many years people have been saying the end is nigh. I get it. I get it. And now, um, now the end is nigh. We're getting laughed at. People are very reluctant to listen to the church preachers and teachers, even though today's preachers and teachers have got so much more crystal clear evidence that prophetic um, teachings are reaching their fulfillment, okay? Um, we've been programmed into cynicism. Now we have a contempt. Uh, there's a general social contempt towards the end time preachers and the hellfire and brimstone, blah, 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 blah. We're getting laughed at. We've, the church has actually fallen for the age old trap of the devil to make God's word not seem so strong as it really is. You know, we have to maybe add to it or take away from it. And here we are now in March, 2020, we're just climbing out of a six month lockdown. And what's going on in the world today is way past shocking, okay? It's getting really scary. And so what I wanna do, because I, I work with chemically dependent men and women, I have done for years, all right? I'm ex-chemically dependent. I was a heroin addict and I've been in and out of prison for the, that's the only thing that kept me alive through the 80s was the prison. I was in and out of prison between 1981 and no, between 1982 and 1993. I did six and a half years in and out of prison in 27 different prisons. So it was the prison gave me bail from the addiction. Okay, and I'm also a, um, what's the word? Um, Re-educated addiction specialist, that's it. Re-educated addiction specialist. In my recovery from addiction, in year seven or five of my recovery, I went back into the education system. So I'm a re-educated addiction specialist. I went into the addiction with no education and I came out of the addiction with no, edu uh, with no education and in recovery, I've got a degree in clinical supervision, counseling, and all, all kinds of shenanigans have gone on. So let me address you today as a born again, I was born again on the 17th of June, 1993 in prison. And I stopped the, des the desire for mind and mood altering substances left me in the waters of baptism or I climbed out of those dirty life controlling desires. When I was baptized in full immersion in a rubbish bin in an English prison, as I came out of the water and as, as I climbed out, climbed out of the rubbish bin, it was removed. It felt like a dirty, horrible, wet blanket or a dirty, horrible, smelly, wet trench coat had been whipped off, okay? And the desires changed. I've been clean and sober ever since. So from 13 and a half years of intravenous heroin addiction, I've now got um, twice as much clean time. I've now got 27 years clean time. And as I say, the re-education's gone on. And so I'm speaking to you as a born again, spirit filled, liberated rogue um, with a degree in theology. I went to Bible college for four years. And um, because of most of that, let me just clarify something. As an addiction specialist, I can't see why we have to include psychiatrists and psychologists in addictions counseling. What about, what's that about? That's like going to a brain surgeon for an ingrowing toenail. We're addiction specialists. I'm an addiction specialist and I've got a team of addiction, special, addiction specialists. We've all climbed out of the valley of addiction. Eh? 
some of us do need psychiatric evaluation, psychiatric counselling. Because I work in the gory stories for years and years and years, up until a couple of years ago, I've not been for a couple of years, but I visit the psychiatrist and let him give me a checkup from the neck up, all right? And it was quite expensive to be told there's nothing to diagnose, all right? So, um, as and when I come across men and women who have personality issues, crystal clear personality issues, that's not an addiction, that's a personality issue, then I've got absolutely no problem at all referring through to a clinical psychologist. But as an addiction specialist, I don't see why the clinical, psychological, psychiatric world has got its nose so far into our realm and pretty much taken over from within, convincing us that we can't get clean without a clinical psychologist. I believe what Charles Spurgeon said. At the age of 19, Charles Haddon Spurgeon said, the best way to understand man is to study God. If the scripture is what the scripture says it is, the word of God, then man is made in the likeness of God. So in order for me to truly understand man, I have to study theology. And so far, the story has progressed into a miraculous story. All right, and many men and women who have been through our facility or gone through counsel with me or one or two of our boys and girls who do the counseling <clears throat> I'm hearing from them all the time Colin please do a bible study Colin please do a church can I come to your fellowship when you, can you do a bible study on this and I'm really nervous about doing the bible study because the scriptures that right now this morning I'm going to look at the <clears throat> excuse me I'm going to show you something in the book of Daniel buried in the Old Testament, okay? A Hebrew who wrote in Hebrew, okay? And from a Hebrew mindset, in a Hebrew context. And I'm an ex smackhead from Manchester. Got to try now and interpret the scripture um, into an, something that I've got to try and contextualize the scriptures so that the likes of you and me, westernized thinkers who have been drowning in the swamp of chemical dependency for I don't know how long, so that we can maybe hear it, embrace it, receive it, and maybe be changed by it. That's what the Bible study is about. That's what all Bible study is about. It's about change. It's about we change into the more into the likeness of God. And so this morning, I have to go into Daniel. I've been listening to Jacob Prash. And honestly, guys, you've got to listen to Jacob Prash. That's his name, P-R-A-S-C-H, Jacob Prash, Jacob. <laughs> Hebrew thinker, Hebrew speaker, lives in, it, it, I think he's got, um, he lives in England, he's got family in America, he was, he was born in a Roman Catholic kind of, with Roman Catholic parents, going to a synagogue, all kinds of stuff. This guy has got insights into everything that, I personally believe this guy has got insights from within the very engine room of everything that's ripping us off as false religions and distortions of God's word. Best person in the world to listen to about Roman Catholicism is an ex-Roman Catholic. Best person in the world to listen to is about Judaism is a born again Judaistic believer. Jacob, in my opinion, ticks all the boxes. And I listen to him over and over again. And the more I listen to him, the more I think about you guys who are struggling in recovery or struggling for theological nourishment. And, and it's really easy for me to recommend you listen to Jacob Prash. In fact, I'm on the brink of saying, if you don't listen to Jacob Prash first, you're flogging a dead horse listening to me. Okay, my aim now is to get you really interested and wanting to go deeper than I can take you, and then all you're gonna hear me say is, go listen to Jacob Prash. Find what you want in the teachings of Moriel Ministries with Jacob Prash at the helm. Okay, you can also write this name down, David Pawson, P-A-W-S-O-N. He's just been promoted to glory, he's just recently died. Okay, 
but these are you're not going to need more teachers than Jacob Prash and David Pawson. If you need to go looking beyond Jacob Prash and David Pawson, and you're not David Pawson, it's because you're not listening. And maybe you don't like what you're hearing. No, I don't understand it. Wrestle with it. I want to show you something now about a prophet who was young, intelligent, good looking, and he struggled to understand messages that he was clearly receiving from Yahweh. We're supposed to struggle to understand. The problem is, because we struggle, we give up. Let me tell you something, boys and girls. There ain't no giving up. Okay, no surrender, no turning back. All right? So, it's with fear and trepidation that I open the scriptures before you this morning. And I've had this camera pointed at me. I don't know how many times to do this message. And I just don't feel worthy. I'm willing to take a risk. I'm willing to share with you everything that I've heard and been able to see within the scriptures, okay? And there's something within this particular scripture this morning. If it does not tweak your interest, or if this doesn't tweak your interest, if you're not prepared to sit up and listen, listen to what this scripture is saying, you might be in more trouble than frustration, eh? It might not be frustration that you're suffering with. It could be a heck of a lot worse than frustration. So, I want you to get a Bible in front of you. I don't want you to just listen to me. I laid a challenge down. I run a little fellowship in our home, which is just starting again now after COVID-19, during the lockdown, and I was thinking about the fellowship, and I was thinking about um, these guys, what teachings are my little sh flock getting? And then in the same conversation, I was able to say, well, they've got their Bibles. But then I had to concede, but they never bring a Bible. They come to Bible study without a Bible. C'est fini pour toi. I can't, c'est fini pour moi. I can't do that, man. If, if you think you can go through a Bible study without a Bible, c'est fini pour toi. It's over for you. If you think you can come to one of my Bible studies without a Bible, c'est fini pour moi. It's over for me. I'm not interested in entertaining you. We've got to turn to God's word, man. Hell yawns beneath us. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm an evangelist, by the way. So we're going to go into Daniel, the book of Daniel in the Old Testament, you'll find it. Open the Bible at the middle. In the middle of the scriptures, you've got the Psalms. Open the Bible at the middle, turn right and get past Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and you'll come up to, you'll find it. Daniel chapter eight and Daniel chapter 12. Okay, that's what we're gonna look at. Daniel chapter eight and Daniel chapter 12. All right, before we go to Daniel chapter eight, and Daniel chapter 12, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to say this before every Bible study, okay? In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I'm going to flick forward to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. You can join me if you want. 1 Corinthians, you're going to get used to me saying this anyway. You can join me in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, says to the church at Corinth, I don't want you to be unaware, brothers, that our fathers were all under the cloud and all passed through the sea. So Paul is taking the Jewish believers, they're now, they're now um, or he's referring to his Jewish heritage, his Jewish forefathers who came out of Exodus, came out of Egypt, okay, and they go through the Red Sea, and on the other side of the Red Sea, through the day, a cloud hovered above them, and by night, a flame hovered. And it was the presence of the Lord guiding his people. It was typological. That's how the Lord steered his people. As soon as they came out of slavery, he overwhelmed them with a cloud and was in front of them and behind them at the same time from time to time in the, in the flaming fire. It's a theophany, it's, it's what God used to guide his people, okay? Where back there, back then, 
they he overshadowed them and led them from the front now he penetrates so the old testament law overwhelmed christ jesus penetrates and leads from within okay so that's what paul's talking to this church at corinth about and he says these things took place in verse 6 1 corinthians chapter 10 and verse 6 these things took place as an example for us that we might not desire evil as they did. So these guys who had every reason to believe that God was exactly who he said he was, these guys who had every justification to abandon life itself in order to be close to Yahweh, after their slavery, after, their, um, after the blood of the Lamb, after they were liberated because they were marked by the blood of the Lamb, and after they went through their symbolic baptism, going through the Red Sea, and after the Red Sea closed in on their enemies and drowned their past, drowned their past masters. Okay, so the people of God have gone under the blood of the Lamb. They've then gone out from the, um, the slavery, the camp of slavery, They've then gone through the waters of baptism and the waters of baptism has drowned their enemy. The enemy was wanting to chase them down again. Okay, they then go out into the wilderness and start bitching and biting and backbiting and moaning and groaning because they desired evil. Okay, so the first little lesson there is I don't care when I don't care about your testimony or when you were baptized or why you were baptized. You can lose your salvation. Going to a Bible study without a Bible is like going to a boxing ring. It's like going to a, a knife fight. It's like going to a, a gunfight with a pea shooter. Okay, so we're in the scriptures, and Paul is saying to the church, these things happened back there, back then, as, a, as an example for us, so that we don't do what they did. So Paul is, whilst he disciples them, the New Testament church, the early church, he points them back into the Old Testament. He points them back, points them back, points them back, as an example for us. 70% of the scripture is Old Testament. So 70% of the scripture has been written as an example for us. So that we didn't we don't desire evil the way they did. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse. Why am I in Matthew? I don't know why I'm in Matthew. It happens, man. All the time. I've got I've just passed the age of 61 and I'm fast galloping towards the age of 62. And now, more and more often, I'm finding my glasses in the fridge and I take bread out of the packet and put the bread back in the bread basket and put the packet next to the... Oh, it's great. It's good fun. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 10. That was 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 6. Everything that happened all the way back there, back then, happened as an example for us in the here and now. And then again, the same in verse 11. These things happened to them as an example, but they were written down for our instruction upon whom the end of the age has come. The end, it was all written down for us upon whom the end of the ages has come. So, for us to fully understand what the end of the ages is, is looking like all we've got to do is watch the news all right particularly after we read daniel chapter 7 and daniel chapter 12. we're going in down daniel chapter 7 and daniel chapter 12 now to see if we can identify today then because i'm going to tell you now i'm going to from a deep conviction what was said back there, back then, wasn't said for them back there, back then. What was said back there, back then, was said for you and me in the here and now. Okay? Right, Daniel chapter 7, and I'm going to start at verse 15. To set the context, we need help. I've got these commentaries, okay? I use this guy, I've got various commentaries. In brief from one layman to another, okay? In Daniel chapter eight, 
in the third year of Belshazzar. A vision appeared to Daniel. Daniel is given visions in the first 14 verses of chapter 8. And the visions talk about images like goats and rams with horns and broken horns. And the vision is from verse 15. We see the interpretation of the vision. And I'm just going to share the interpretation of the vision. The countries that are symbolized in the first half of the chapter are up and running. They are, it's all happening, guys. Okay? So, in verse, from verse 15, Daniel chapter 8. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We open your word as pilgrims and peasants, as um, hungry visitors who turn up and want to eat a meal without using cutlery. I pray, Father, that you would love us, talk to us, reveal yourself to us, despite us, Lord. The time is closing, the enemy is closing in. Men and women have climbed out of chemical dependency and the devil is knocking hell out of them. I pray, Father, that you would draw heaven. I pray that you would draw each and every one of us closer to the reality of the coming victory where King Jesus himself will go toe to toe with the king of hell, the author of lies, the prince of demons, and just and wipe him out with the breath of his mouth. Whew. Father, I pray that you would show Jesus to us today as we go into your word for all our sakes and for your glory in jesus name amen when i daniel had seen this vision i sought to understand it so this is a clever kid eh? this daniel he's not behind the door highly educated he's in babylonian captivity at the moment and the the babylonians didn't take the skeleton and the they wanted to repopulate and educate and all kinds of stuff. They wanted to they wanted to take the best of the Hebrew people and Babylonial Babylonialize them. Okay, for their own benefit. A bit like religion. Alright? So when I Daniel had seen the vision, I sought to understand it. And behold, there stood before me one having the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Ulie. I don't know how to pronounce that, U-L-A-I. Okay, so Daniel is seeking to understand the vision and he sees the vision of one in the appearance of a man. And it called this appearance, this he who appeared in the likeness of a man called Gabriel. Make this man understand the vision. Gabriel is the mighty one of God, okay? But this one who appears in the likeness of man has got authority over him. It's Jesus, basically. Make this man understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came, I was frightened and fell on my face. But he said to me, Understand, O son of man, that the vision is for the time of the end. And, he spoke, and when he had spoken to me, I fell in a deep I fell into a deep sleep with my face to I think he passed out. I think I would pass out. <laughs> okay. When he had spoken to me, I fell into a deep sleep with my face to the ground, but he touched me and made me stand up. And he said, Behold, I will make known to you what shall be at the latter end of the indignation for it refers to the appointed time of the end. Okay, so there is a period of indignation coming to God's people and the vision that he's just been given refers to the latter end of the indignation. Okay, I'm convinced with others that this period of indignation is the closing seven years of history. We call it the tribulation period. Okay, so he said, Behold, I will make known to you what will be at the latter end of the indignation, for it refers to the appointed time of the end. As for the ram, 
that you saw with the two horns, these are the kings of Media and Persia. So there's a ram, and then there's the kings of representing the kings of Media and Persia. None of these guys are in love with the Hebrews, let me tell you. Okay? Where's he gone? Media. And the goat is the king of Greece. So now we've got a ram, we've got the kings of Media and Persia, and we've got a goat who is representing the king of Greece. And the great horn between his eyes is the first king. As for the horn that was broken in place, as for the horn that was broken, verse 22, in place of which four others arose, your four kingdoms shall arise from his nation, but not with his power. Okay? So there's kings, there's nations arising, there's kings arising, but they're not arising in their own strength. There's a supernatural spiritual power that's empowering them. His power shall be great, but not by his own power. And he shall cause fearful destruction and shall succeed in what he does and destroy mighty men and the people who are the saints. So it's not God. God is overseeing this. God is inspiring this prophecy, but it's not God, this mighty king that's going to arise. He's going to be the king of many nations. He's going to have power, extreme power. And he's going to destroy many people and many Christians. By his cunning, he shall make deceit prosper. And he shall cause fearful, he shall cause, where's it gone? Sorry. His power shall be great, but not by his own power. I've gone back to verse 24 but not by his own power, and he shall cause people who are the saints. He shall destroy many people and who are the saints. Without warning, he shall destroy many. Wow. I'm going to read this again, guys, because the significance and importance, as I get to the most significant and most important, I get a slight panic attack, and I'm an anxiety attack and it could be the devil i don't know i honestly truly don't know but when it comes to the most important section that i want to communicate with you i start to stumble okay so i'm going to go back for back to verse 22 lord protect us guide us lead us by your spirit as for the horn that was broken in place of which four others arose four kingdoms shall arise from his nation but not with his power and at the latter end of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their limit, a king of bold face, one who understands riddles, shall arise. Please, let's just focus on this verse here. When the transgressors, when the transgress, transgressors have reached their limit, when transgression is complete, when societies are absolutely governed and controlled by deceptive, prosperous deceit and riotous transgression is absolutely at its capacity. Close your eyes now and think about the riots in South Africa, in London, in America. Think about how the different cultures are turning on each other. Think about how the different cultures are absolutely abusing the planet. Okay? And at the latter end of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their limit, a king of bald face, one who understands riddles, shall arise. That's the Antichrist. So when we go into this window of indignation and lawlessness runs riot, and it started, okay? There was just, the, the most shocking one for me was a young police officer trying to arrest a black guy. And the black guy, I don't know what the black guy's up to. I don't even care what he was, I don't care what he was up to. He might have been bang out of order. He probably was bang out of order. You know, you don't go out to a riot to take photographs and have fun. So this copper has gone after him, maybe, just maybe, for justifiable cause. And this guy walks away, doesn't want to know, he's trying to get away, he's getting into his car, and this copper goes in behind him, 
and shoots him in the back seven times. That is not in the training manual. Mercilessly, carelessly shoots this black guy in the neck, in the back seven times. Transgression is reaching its fulfillment. It is just getting worse. Now, this is what the scripture teaches. We've crossed the line. This is irreversible. This is not going to stop. This is not going to get any better. This is only going to spread and get worse. And it's nothing compared to what's going to happen when we go into that tribulation period. These are just the te we're just teething now. The fangs are starting to irritate our gums now. Okay. What we're seeing on the news on a day-to-day -day basis, this is it's nothing compared to what's coming. But we've already crossed the line. This is irreversible. This is going to take a miracle from heaven to bring this to, a hen to an end. Okay? By his cunning, he shall make this king, this antichrist. By his cunning, he shall make deceit prosper under his hand. And in his own mind, he shall become great. Within his heart, he elevates himself. That was the original sin of Satan. That's a satanic sin. That's the embryonic satanic sin. Exalting himself. In his own eyes, he's great. Okay? Without warning, he shall destroy many. You see, this Antichrist is going to sign a peace treaty with Israel. He's going to orchestrate a, a seven-year peace treaty with Israel. And then halfway through the peace treaty, he's going to jump ship and start killing people. He's going to completely abandon and roll up that peace treaty and bin it. And without warning, he's going to slaughter many. Okay? I hear two-thirds of the Jews are going to get wiped out. Okay? I don't know how true that is, but I trust my teacher. I really, truly trust my teacher. Without warning, he shall destroy many, and he shall even rise up against the prince of princes. You see this arrogant idiot? He rises up, he abandons the peace treaty, he kills however many, and then he thinks he can go nose to nose with Jesus himself, the prince of princes. And he shall be broken but by no human hand. God, Jesus is going to sneeze on the Antichrist and the entire kingdom of the Antichrist is going to be wiped out and cast into the eternal lake. What does the kingdom of the Antichrist look like? Well, it's deceptive. It thinks it's good. It thinks it's beyond the law. It's, it's more comfortable with religion than Bible study. Um, as long as the Bible study doesn't um, interrupt them, it's called Babylon. Okay, we're happy. We, you know, I've got this real ah in me about political parties. The South African Christian political party. Where's the biblical mandate for Christian political parties? We don't hold hands with the world. That's what. That's what. That's the essence of Babylon, where it's religion and it's really nice, but it holds hand with false religions. And it's happening, man. Transgression is reaching its fulfillment. It's coming, eh? This vision is true. And then Daniel is told, seal up the vision, for it refers to many days from now. And Daniel says, I was overcome and lay sick for days. It floored him, eh? It floored him. He was appalled by the vision and he didn't really understand it. We would never understand this vision, this interpretation, if it wasn't for what was going on in the world right now. But this has been here for thousands of years. And then he's told, seal up the vision, for it refers to many days from now. So that particular vision was rolled up, scrolled up, sealed and buried like a time capsule. OK, so there were things in the scripture from that point forward that nobody knew about. They were sealed up 
and buried. Let's go to Dan Daniel chapter 12 for the same principle. At that time, Daniel chapter 12 from verse 1. At that time, what time? Okay, you've only got to go back maybe six or seven verses. If you go, we're going to go into Daniel chapter 12. So let's just go into Daniel chapter 11 and the opening of Daniel chapter 11 and verse 40. At the time of the end, there you go. That's what um, chapter 12 refers to. At that time, at what time? The time of the end. At the time of the end, Michael, the great prince, who has charge over your people, I'm sorry, at that time shall arise Michael, the great prince, who has charge of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never been since, since, since there was a nation till that time. You see the Second World War, the First World War, the Holocaust, the um, anything that you can reflect on that was an absolute atrocity within mankind. Nothing compared to what's coming. But at that time your people shall be delivered. Everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. Everyone whose name shall be found written in the book. Where are those books? They're closed in heaven at the moment. Is your name in there? And if your name's in there, did your Baptist minister or your Roman Catholic priest or did your Anglican minister tell you that he's written your name in that book? Because that, if your name is in that book, it has to be written in the blood of the Lamb. And many of those in the, who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And those who are, those who are wise, okay, so there's a wisdom that's needed when these scrolls are opened. Those who are wise, as we read this scripture now, we need a specific type of wisdom. It's a biblical wisdom, not human wisdom, not philosophical wisdom, not the wisdom of an ex-addict to another addict. Biblical wisdom. <laughs> Just nearly wrecked my office. Biblical wisdom. Okay. Where have we gone? Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the sky above, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. But you, Daniel, shut up these words and seal the book until the end of time. So there's another scroll that's getting signed, sealed, and not delivered. Many shall run to and fro at the end times. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge, knowledge shall increase. I'm going to read this, the words of this vision again. And I want you to close your eyes now, because I'm just going to add something onto the end of it. All right. What I'm about to read ends with the word increase. What I say directly after the word increase is me. It's not in the word of God. All right. OK, so it says, but you, Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Quote. Many shall, uh, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. International World Travel and Google. Then I looked from verse 5. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, two others standing, one on this bank of the stream and one on that bank of the stream. And someone said to the man clothed in linen, who was, who was above the waters, here we now see Jesus again hovering above the waters. Okay, Jesus is the one who can walk on the water, hover above the water. And Jesus is the spirit with skin on, the same spirit in Genesis chapter 1 where it says the spirit of God hovered above the waters. It's... It's God's thumbprint in the Old Testament, okay? The man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the stream. How long shall it be till the end of these wonders? And I heard the man clothed in linen, in linen who was above the waters of the stream. He raised his right hand and his left hand towards heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it would be for a time, times and half a time. Time, times, and half a time. A year, two years, 
half a year, three and a half years, the second half of the tribulation. The, when, and, and that when the shattering of the people of the holy I'm sorry man he raised his right hand and his left hand towards heaven and swore by him who lives forever that it would be for a time time and half a time and that when the shattering of the power of the holy people the shattering there's going to come a shattering of the power a shattering of the witness of God's people we're going to lose our power in society, in community. He's not going to remove his spirit from the Bible, Judeo-based, born-again, spiritful Christians. No, no, no. He's going to allow those who refuse to be Judeo-rooted, Judeo-born-again, spirit-filled New Testament saints, blah, 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 blah. Those whose theology only goes as far back as the New Testament the Old Testament it's not for today there's going to be a shattering of the power of the holy people born again spirit filled Judeo rooted Bible believing Christians evangelists and pastors we're going to lose our power in our communities why? transgression is reaching its maximum they're not listening to us. They're not listening to us. That's because false teachers. I can't say it without. False teachers and game show hosts like Benny Hinn. And now we've got this guy in South Africa. He's got thousands and thousands of boor following him. He's a Scotchman, man. He's a Scotchman telling him, calling himself a boar and then he's saying that we Afrikaners are the only people who have got a covenant with God. It's a lie. It's not true. And I'm telling you, man, you're not listening to us. Why? Well, it could be that God is breaking the power of the truly regenerate, truly converted, not the religiously cultural faithful, you clown. Not the religiously cultural faithful, the truly born again spiritful. Those who are willing to walk away from their communities to bury their dead. Those who are willing to walk away from their families without burying their dead. Truly converted from the old life to the new, from the flesh to the spirit. Truly born again, spirit filled, seasoned theologians whose teachings go all the way from Genesis chapter 1 right through to the end of Revelation chapter 22. We're losing our witness, man. We're losing our witness because you won't listen. And because you won't listen, he's taking our power away, man. The shattering of the people, the shattering of the power of the, of the holy people. Listen, I'm not calling myself a holy person. The Bible tells me who I am. I wouldn't consider me holy for crying out loud. Then I said, Lord, what shall be the outcome of these things? And the Lord said, just go get on with your day, Daniel, for the words are shut up and sealed until the time of the end. Many shall purify themselves and make themselves white and be refined. Some of you, because your mom and dad were Christians, because your mom and dad were NGK or Anglican or Baptist, some of you think that you can be Christian without being convicted of sin, broken hearted, turning to God because of what Jesus did and then being refined and purified. You can't refine without pain. It hurts, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I was born in a... My, my dad was a pastor and my granddad was a pastor. God doesn't have any grandchildren. If you're not born again, you belong to the system of the Antichrist. And I couldn't care less what your dad does. Heroin addicts, alcoholics, dope heads, acid freaks, methamphetamine addicts, tune in, man. What you receive from the substance is spiritual, it's false and it's counterfeit, spiritual enlightenment, a sense of omnipotence, a sense of invincibility, a sense of we know everything about every subject, 
that's only God can deliver those dynamics that will last forever because your methamphetamine lasts about 20 minutes at best so you're looking for the right things from the wrong people in the wrong ways and you're selling yourself short by settling for the counterfeit it's a virtual reality it's a virtual culture it's virtual friendships in that virtual reality and the substance always wears off you will meet Jesus once he will keep showing himself to you but when the eyes of your heart see Christ nailed to a cross with you on his mind and then that empty tomb I picture him in the empty tomb man on the morning that the heart started to beat and the blood started to warm up and maybe the eyelid the eyelash the what are these called the eye, the eyeballs behind the eyelids start to move and the muscles start to receive blood and that first <gasps> out of the grave death is dead and in that first breath, <gasps> Colin, I've got you. It's over. C'est fini pour toi. Anything else is ball dust. I don't mind if the Lord breaks the power of my evangelism. Because I'm sick and tired of trying to evangelize inside the churches I'll walk away from church or I'll walk away from that which calls itself church and as a fisherman of souls I'm going to dive off the side of the boat and go looking for fish that will listen David Pawson's dad told David Pawson son you must never just climb into a man's soul as a Christian you need to get alongside first and befriend many will purify themselves and be refined but the wicked the wicked are those who the wicked are those who turn up at church every Sunday and their Bible stays at home with that much dust on them God's not interested in your audience his son died, suffered and died, and he had to watch his son being bullied and spat at by men like me. God's not interested in your, in your attendance. He wants to know, do you know me? Can you give an account of the faith that you profess? Can you deliver to the saints and the lost the entire counsel of God? Are you ashamed of the gospel? If you, go to, if you go to a Bible study without the Bible, it's because you're lazy and you're ashamed of the gospel. And I've just lost my page. The wicked, yo. Let's go back and find out what happens to the wicked. We're nearly there guys. I can feel the, the undercarriage is lowered now. Daniel chapter 12. Many shall purify themselves and make themselves white. It's your responsibility to get yourself purified. Your responsibility to get to start dressing up within the 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 wedding garments. Too many Christians who go to churches without a Bible. They're waiting for Jesus to return. Failing to see that Jesus is waiting for them to get ready. Jesus is not going to come back to collect a prostitute or a scruffy old tart. When Jesus comes back, he's coming back for a pure, spotless bride. And the majority of the responsibility is upon Gentile believers now because God wants Gentile converts to be rooted in Judeo-Christian teachings so that we can make the Jews jealous. Your God, Rabbi, that you don't teach, he's come to us and we're being made white. It's our responsibility. But the wicked shall act wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand. But those who are wise 
shall understand. And from the time that the regular burnt offering is taken away and the abomination that makes desolation is set up <clears throat> shall be a certain number of days. So whilst um, the signs are crystal clear, they're talking to us, they're, point they're not just talking to us, man, they're shouting at us. Here's my question to you. First, let me say, how dare we go to our church, not take a Bible, and just listen to what the guy behind the pulpit, this, this box, says? You, you think you're going to understand Scripture from what he says the Scripture tells you? You're acting wickedly. And that's why your understanding is not having any power or impact in society. You're on the outside looking in. On the morning that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Or the evening of the day that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. He visited his disciples who had walked away from their communities. His disciples were gathering in a room. They were hiding from their families. They were hiding from the, the, the religious surroundings. They were hiding from the Judaizers. They were, they, they, it, was, it, was a, it was very similar to a small band of Afrikaners hiding from the pastor, the Dumini, from the NGK, or it, a small body of Roman Catholic born-again, spirit-filled, Judeo-understanding Christians who've walked away from the Roman Catholic Church and they're hiding from their religion. And Jesus, on the night that he arose, he made an appearance to his believers who had walked away from their businesses to follow him. And even after he had been in the grave for three nights, he they gathered together and then he appeared to them and in that same meeting John chapter 20 from verse 19 and following in that same meeting Jesus breathed on them and said receive the Holy Spirit so we have his followers encountering the risen Jesus converted into Judeo rooted born again spirit filled Christians that's the church nothing else qualifies and those things happened back there back then as a lesson to us in the here and now there's another verse that i want to share with you one ecclesiastes chapter one and verse nine right in the middle of the bible close enough to the middle of the bible ecclesiastes one and verse nine what did happen will happen what has taken place will take in place will take place as it started is how it will end has the church started with a small band of believers who have walked away from everything and everyone to follow Christ encountering the risen Christ receiving his spirit and being born again right there right then in John chapter 20 but they had no power in their community until 49 days later there is a window of time where the truly born again spiritful Judeo based Christians are going to lose their power in communities. They're not going to lose their saviour, they're just going to lose their impact. Are you listening? My name's Colin. I would ask you to maybe um, share this with people. If you feel just so led, all right? There's this thing, uh, subscribe at the bottom, give me a thumbs up. I don't, it, I need, if, if you like what you've heard, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't, I don't need a sign. <laughs> Let me pray for you. Father, I think that's your word. I think that's your heartbeat. I'm ready to die. I'm right here, right now, Lord, and I'm ready to. Hold my hands up. I think I've said what needs to be said. I think I've said what you've wanted me to say. And I pray, Father, for those who may be clocked out and I'm not putting up with this. I pray, Lord, that you'll bless them and just keep your hand on them and 
Don't give up on them, Lord, just like you never gave up on me. We thank you for your goodness and kindness and mercy. We thank you for your wonderful son, Lord Jesus. We thank you personally for what you did and for what you're doing. We look forward to the day where you will blast out evil by a simple breath and that millennial kingdom will be in your hands and we will be your ministers and politicians and police officers and oh we look forward to that kingdom lord we look forward to honoring you we look forward to just quiet time with you i hope there's tea in the millennial kingdom and we can sit down and have a cup of tea together we thank you for all that you've done holy spirit we thank you for your faithfulness to the call and the heartbeat of the trinity the triune godhead we thank you for your harmony father god lord jesus holy spirit we thank you for the unity that you have within you and that unity is passed on to us as husbands and wives and as truly born again regenerated change converted christians with a message to carry for jesus sake amen i've lost the what's it there it is